How do we bend a four-point saddle in conduit? So a four-point saddle is usually gonna be used if you have a large obstruction or if you have a long obstruction. So typically I'll bend a three-point saddle for smaller stuff. Like if you get like a three-quarter, one inch, maybe even like a two inch obstruction, like a piece of conduit on a wall, you know, like say we're getting over this, you could bend a three point saddle, but the, the larger an object that you get, the harder it's gonna be to get that three point. So having a four point saddle, usually if you're talking like above three inch, maybe four inch, you know, stuff like that, you're gonna wanna offset over it and then do a four point saddle and offset back. So a four point saddle is essentially like this. Conduit's gonna look like that. It's gonna come in, it's gonna kick up, kick over, kick back down and keep going straight. So typically if you have like a, a large you know, piece of wood or something like that, you're gonna offset up, go over across it and then offset back down. Three point saddle is usually if you have a conduit or something like that and you just need to like whip over it. So there's only three points. There's the first point, there's the hump and then there's the second point. So four point saddle, four bends, let's get into it. The obstruction we're gonna jump over is this object. So this is, what do we got? Six inches and it is nine and a quarter. Let's just say nine and a half. I don't deal with sh shrinkage, so normally I'm just gonna kind of like round up. I give a little bit extra because when you bend conduit, you have something called shrinkage. Um, if you're doing things that are like absolutely tight and on every single thing, you like you want all of these conduits to be perfect, you do need to take into account shrinkage, but most of us out in the field, we don't really consider shrinkage. We kind of just add like a little bit to fudge our numbers, um, or we will me uh, measure everything for the offset perfectly. We won't worry about the shrinkage at the end of the pipe, because as you keep bending, due to the fact that the conduit's not just straight anymore, every bend kind of shrinks the conduit just a little bit. Um, so a lot of us will just account for cutting off at the very end to make sure that every single one of our bends are the same. All right, so first thing that I do is I figure out what my distance is to the object that I have to cover. So right here to the end of that is 59. I'm gonna mark that and I'm gonna call this bend number one. Now I'm like, don't write all these things on a piece of conduit and don't ever use a Sharpie either. Like if you're going to be writing on conduit, use a pencil because then you can just rub it off. I'm using Sharpie for demonstration purposes. So it's easier to see on a camera and I'm writing one, two, three, four. So we can just kind of keep track of where we are. So step one is we measure two our obstruction to figure out what that is. Step two is we need to come back from that first mark to figure out what the, the height of the object is. So if the height of our object was six inches, we're gonna use 30 degree bends. So if you go in your uglies manual, you can do 45 degree bends, 22 and a half degree bends, 30 degree bends, 60 degree bends, all kinds of stuff. And there's little multipliers for each one, but just to make this easier, I'm doing a two X multiplier so I can use a 30 degree bend. That means I'm gonna have kind of a gentle bend 45 degree bend is gonna be a pretty aggressive bend. A 60 degree bend is gonna be incredibly aggressive. 22 and a half would be way out here like this. It'd be a really soft bend. I like the look of a 30 degree bend. I don't want some crazy amount of conduit coming up. Um, the more aggressive the, the bend that you do, the more difficult it is gonna to be to pull wire through there. So, you know, do as soft of a bend as you can. Generally 30 degrees is just fine. So the second thing is I said that this is a six inch high object, well, my multiplier for 30 degree bends for an offset is a uh, 2x multiplier. So six times two is gonna give us enough room for our offset. So our first offset, um, we said we're gonna go to 12, so I'm gonna mark 12. And I'm gonna say that that is number two. Next thing we need to do is account for our length. So the length we said was nine and a half. So we need to go to our first mark and we need to mark nine and a half. Nine and a half is right there. I'm gonna mark that. And I'm gonna call that number three. And then our last thing, we just have to do another offset. So the same thing with the first offset, we know that we're at six inches to clear that height. So the next thing that we need to do is multiply it by two and add uh, that 12 to the end of our conduit. So we've got 
the end of our conduit right there. And we're gonna go to 12. And this is gonna be number four. The reason that I'm doing that is because I wanna show how, like what order we bend them. It's not one, two, three, four. It's specifically one, two, and then you come over three, four. You're basically just bending these two and then you're mirroring and flipping everything and doing the same thing on that side. Now, I wanna give a big shout out to Pen Aluminum. Thank you so much, Pen, for sending me all of this aluminum conduit and for sponsoring this video. Um, so the benefits of working with aluminum conduit, A, it's way lighter, so like you wouldn't believe how much like a big stack of conduit that you can lift up when it's aluminum. It's so much lighter, um, a lot easier to bend too. So like if you're used to bending like one inch, inch and quarter, inch and a half conduit, um, be, uh, being able to bend aluminum versus like really like struggling with steel. Um, so the benefit, you know, is obviously it's lighter, but, but being able to bend it is such a huge thing. There's even this coating that they can put on the inside of the conduit that's called blue lightning. It's sort of like a Teflon coating, um, but it essentially it makes pulling a lot easier on the inside of conduit. A lot of times when you're using aluminum conduit, it, it kind of catches more than the steel does. So it's a little bit more difficult to pull wire through sometimes, but with a coating like this, it comes through with a breeze. And the cost of aluminum versus the cost of steel, you're always gonna pay less with aluminum than you are with steel. So just kind of across the board, it makes sense to be using aluminum conduit. If you're interested in finding out more about pen aluminum or looking into their aluminum conduit, check the link in the description below. Let's take our handy dandy bender. And what I'm gonna do is the direction that we took our measurement from I'm gonna to go towards my object and I'm gonna take the shoe of my bender and I'm looking at this arrow right here. This arrow is gonna be the thing that I line up with that and I want it facing away from me so when I step, I'm pulling the object end towards me. So the first thing, let me get this out of the way. We're gonna to go to number one, not number two. Make sure you start at number one. So put this inside of here, line it up with our arrow. Make sure it's on the ground and then stand up. Now you might notice too, I'm using aluminum conduit for this. Uh, Pen Aluminum sent me some aluminum to try out. So this is gonna bend a lot easier than your steel conduits are gonna bend. Steel's a little bit more rigid. Aluminum bends really, really light. So you just gotta make sure as you're bending this that you're not kinking the aluminum. Now when you bend, you wanna utilize this shoe by putting downward pressure with your foot. You're not taking this thing and just cranking it. If you try to do that, you're gonna have this really weird bend. You're just gonna warp the conduit. So you wanna make sure that the pressure downward is the thing that's making the bend happen. You're just using this as a guide while you're pressing down. So for me, some benders are different. Some of these, when you're at 30 degrees, the handle will be straight up and down. Some of them at 45 degrees, your handle will be straight up and down. So you just have to know which bender that you have. Um, so for me, I'm just gonna go straight up and down. And then to check it, I'm gonna pull out my level. Yeah, that's level. All right, so that's bend number one. Now we do bend number two. This is the, the tricky part. Lift it up in the air. And what I do is I put my foot down. You can kind of control the bender so it doesn't slide. If you're ever bending something like this, sometimes as you're bending, it slides out in front of you. So I usually just put my foot in front of it when I'm doing my next bend. The key here is we're gonna have to flip this piece of conduit around. So we need to look for our other number. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my second mark and I'm gonna draw the, the mark all the way around the conduit. Reason that you do that is we're gonna have to flip this conduit around. So I'm gonna loosen this up, slide back to my next mark and spin the conduit 180 degrees. So instead of it facing down, now it's facing up at you. The other thing to do is when you look at it, you can tell this is what we call dog leg. That's kind of dog leg, right? You don't want that. So you wanna make sure that as you're looking at it and you look down the conduit, that it's straight on. To me, that looks pretty straight. One, uh, what I usually do is I try to line the conduit line with that line over there and the, the actual bender. If all three of those things are in line, you're just visually doing it, but then you shouldn't have any dog legs. So now I've, I'm on my second mark. I've got my arrow pointing to my line. Now what I'm doing this time, since I can't push down on the shoe, I need to bend 
downward. You don't want to bend way out here when you're bending either. You don't want to pull all this down because you'll end up warping this part of the conduit. You want to get as close to po as possible to that bender and you can either push down, depending on the size of your conduit, or you can pull down. So usually what I do is a mix of both. I just take this and I'm again, I'm close to the shoe and I bend a little kick and then I come and push down. Now you wanna line this up with the 30 degree mark. So you can tell right there, I didn't bend it enough. So let me push more. Not quite. All right, to me, that looks pretty parallel. Bottom of that is level with that. So that's my first two bends. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I've got my third bend right there, right? But we can't keep the bender here we have to turn the bender around. So we just turn this bender around and go back to the number three. And then we flip the whole thing around. So now here's the next thing. We line up our number three with the front again, and we're just repeating what we just did. We did one, then two, we're doing three, then four. But here's the tricky thing. You gotta make sure that you're bending the same bend. So number three and number one, the first bend we did and the third bend we did, we have to have them go the same direction. So you can see this first one points up. I'm about to bend this down. That's not right. So I have to re like rotate my uh, bends. And here's another example of why you always wanna draw around the conduit. Because if I do this, you're not gonna see the mark. So I'm gonna bring my arrow to my line. I'm gonna straighten this thing out so it's not all kicked like that. All right, to me, that looks straight. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna push down. Now, if you want, you could bend this over and work it on the ground again and push down. I like to do that. All right, so now we've, we've got our three bends. Now we just gotta kick this out to match. So my bender was facing this way. All I'm gonna do is slide down to our last bend and I'm gonna rotate the conduit. So I'm gonna go to my number four line. That matches up. Make sure that all of my bends are straight. So I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm just gonna push down. Now you can actually look at this and look down the line, <laughs> almost hit the camera, and you can see if there's like, if, if one of these is bent off and the other one's bent off, you know that they're not gonna actually lay down flat on the ground. You can also look at it to see if there's a dog leg in it. You can actually see this one is a little bit, just slightly right here. It's uh, it kind of dog legs out, just a hair. But I always flip it around, look at it multiple sides. And then if I want to take that dog leg out of it, I can just kind of work it barely. A small amount of dog leg, you're never going to notice. It's, it's all right. But if you have something crazy, you're just going to want to rework it. So to me, that looks straight. Well, first we should just check and make sure it sits all the way down on the ground. And that does, like right here it sits down, all the way over there it sits down. You don't have one side kind of kicked up more than the other, and you don't have like a gap between in the ground. So we should be able to slide this thing right underneath. And look at that, perfect. Now shrinkage, when I was saying shrinkage earlier, what I mean is because the pipe shrinks a little bit, if I would have stuck really tight to my numbers, I probably would have been a lot, I would have been a little bit closer here and a little bit closer there. So it might've actually just hugged, like exactly hugged the thing. And a lot of times you don't want that. You might be up against a rough surface or something like that. So you do want like just a hair, a little bit of room on either side, doesn't matter. You don't want the middle of these bends here to be right here. You never want that. You always want enough room for the bend to happen because a bend is gonna happen over, you know, probably like four or five inches. So you want, you want it right in the center of two bends and we have the exact same space on this side as we do here. So the bend's not gonna interfere with the object. We could probably fit a quarter underneath the bottom of that, um, which is perfect. That's what we, what we want. So that is your four point saddle.